So the Bitcoin price dropped from, it was stable for a while, around $475 per Bitcoin. Stable around there for what, like a couple weeks or something, right, Evan? Yeah, about, you know, maybe two and a half weeks. Yeah, 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 pretty stable there. And um, But then, you know, a couple days ago, it was pretty sudden drop from 475 to around the 420 range, 410, and... And then another another day passed, and then we dropped some more to around 400. And I'm looking at this the prices at, at this very moment on Friday evening at six o'clock Pacific Standard Time. It's about 394 dollars per Bitcoin. So we've been like it doesn't it's not quite a flash crash, but uh, it's it's pretty hefty drops over the past couple of days and. Um, there's a lot of theories going on in the community about what has caused this drop, and there's a lot of factors at play. But um, you know, we'll we'll try and get into some of those and talk about the like the likelihood of some of these theories. Um, Evan, what do you? What's your analysis of this recent uh, price drop? Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy so i feel like i can confidently call myself a bitcoin veteran now because of this crash um because anybody who's a regular watcher probably knows that i'm fairly new to bitcoin I, you know I, I thought it was a complete crock until march of this year uh you know so i've never seen it go below 400 and uh, now but now you know it went down when i woke up this morning at 9 a.m Eastern time, it was like 370, um, and it didn't, and it didn't even phase me. So, <laughs> so I guess you could say I, I'm an expert Bitcoin roller coaster rider now. You're an expert holder, it, expert yep. hodler. Um, <laughs> hodl. Hodl. <laughs> as far as like what happened, man, it's really. You, there's really not even like one single call. Like you said, there yeah. was a lot of theories, um, and everybody arguing about which one's right and which one's wrong. But uh, you know, the way I see it, they all have contributed to it um, because all of them, you know, all of them really make sense. Like uh, the merchants, merchants selling their revenue so they can pay expenses. Um, obvious. That's a basic. You know, econ one on one, one oh one supply and demand. That's going to make the price go down. Then the miners are doing the same thing. You know, that's another basic economics. Uh, supply over demand, the price is going to go down. Um, and then there, you know, there's just individual people who are feeding off this fear that's being created by the the, uh, the decline. And so we have individuals selling. Yeah. And you know, it's just kind of like. A chain reaction. It's nothing. It's nothing that can be, you know, um, like an, like that can be analyzed, like with the Silk Road auction or something, where it was very obvious how it was impacting the price. It's just a combination of, of lots of things. Uh, and if you know, if you want my personal opinion, I don't think it's gonna stop anytime soon because um, it's just the current state of the market. There's just too much too many bitcoins are getting converted into fiat and so there's just too much getting dumped on the market so yeah. you know it yeah. th it might it might slow down you know there might be little pockets of uh, uh, you know little little pockets of prosperity where it goes back up to like 500 or something but um i It'll think it'll be a while before we see that again i think maybe oh, a couple yeah, months oh yeah definitely yeah, definitely. And but yeah, it's like overall in the long term, it's probably going to continue falling until it reaches a point where um mining slows down a little bit, so there's not as much pressure from there. And um you know, in order to in order to get stabilization, merchants have got to like they have to stop selling their revenue. Um, but that's not going to happen until they can pay their expenses in Bitcoin. So, yeah, and you know. and even there's there's a lot of merchants on board at this point, where like the literally the only reason they're accepting Bitcoin is just for that extra little bit of revenue. 
They don't care about Bitcoin at all as the technology. They don't care about it as a currency. They don't care about any of the underlying principles. They just want the they just want the extra revenue, and they they want that extra revenue in dollars. Like they prefer dollars over Bitcoins. They're just they 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 fell into the the marketing ploy of Coinbase and BitPay and these others who tell them, you know, it's no no transaction fees and, and like you'll attract a brand new customer base who, who you didn't have access to before, people who want to spend their bitcoins on stuff. And the merchants are like, wow, this sounds pretty good, sweet. But like there's some a lot of merchants are hurting for business right now and they'll take any extra sources of revenue. And like those kind of merchants and I think that they're probably the majority of merchants who have come on board by now. Like they I don't think they're even gonna be looking to um try and pay their suppliers in Bitcoin because they don't care about Bitcoin as as a currency or technology. They just want the extra revenue. So like that kind of that that kind of push is is being pushed by like like big players like Overstock just because Pat, Patrick Byrne is a firm believer in Bitcoin. So he wants to pay his suppliers in Bitcoin and they're looking into ways of, you know, pushing adoption and, you know, holding a relatively large percent of Bitcoin in profits instead of converting it. But like, that's just Overstock. And we know that Overstock is, is a huge supporter and they've been a huge, huge supporter for almost a year now. But like the vast majority of these thousands upon thousands of merchants who came on board with BitPay and Coinbase, like that's the service that BitPay and Coinbase provide to them. They convert Bitcoins to fiat immediately. And like it, it doesn't go on to exchanges right away. Uh, it's, it's not like uh, BitPay and Coinbase, like automatically sell it on Bitstamp, which is what some people think. But I don't, I don't think that's how their actual operations work. They probably have a gigantic stash of cash lying around, which they hand off to the merchants. And then in exchange, uh, they they take the Bitcoin and just hold the Bitcoin. And then they probably wait uh, a little while to sell it off in gigantic blocks. Um, either maybe on Bitstamp, they kind of spread it out on Bitstamp or other exchanges. Or maybe they sell it over the counter to, you know, maybe large investors who want to buy large stacks. But eventually um people who want to make returns on their money they're going to end up selling it at some point anyway and i think that even if coinbase and bitpay aren't exactly directly related to selling on exchanges somewhere down the line that bitcoin does get sold on exchanges a lot of the time for a lower uh exchange rate uh, you know lower lower ask offers and that's what drives down the price. So, like, I mean, this I've been touting this theory for weeks now that merchant adoption can drive down price. And, like, you know, some people are finally starting to listen to that as a possible um, possible driver of price. And, and even um, Coindesk um, yesterday did an article about the price drop. And they acknowledged that uh, merchant adoption can drive down the price. And they talked to an expert as well. And they, they actually, they, they kind of did an interesting way of analyzing how merchant adoption can, can impact the price. They said, okay, Bitcoin dropped by, uh, by 7.5% today. And Litecoin price also dropped today, but only by 5%. So Bitcoin and Litecoin markets are almost similar enough where we can compare them. And the only difference is that merchant adoption has happened uh, on a grand scale in the Bitcoin space. So by the difference between 5% and 7.5%, like we can attribute merchant adoption impact to just 2.5% of the drop in Bitcoin price. Okay. Mm, that sounds kind of shoddy. <laughs> it's kind of a stretch. Um, credit for uh, creativity uh, for trying to analyze that. But I don't <laughs> think, I don't think that's a very accurate thing. Um, but like, for, forget the whole Litecoin stupid analogy thing. You know, 2.5% uh, drop attributed to merchant adoption. I think that sounds kind of accurate just for different reasons. You know, I can I can kind of see um, Coinbase maybe dropping maybe a thousand Bitcoins on an exchange, you know, in the early morning and dropping the price just like that. And then when the price drops a few dollars like that and someone sees a thousand bitcoins dropped on an, on an exchange, 
lowering the price by 2.5%, then that's when the herd mentality kicks in and other people want to sell and bearish mentality picks up and it's a snowball effect. And then you get the other 5% right after that. And we haven't even gotten into mining centralization and the crazy costs of mining now. <laughs> so like, there's a lot of factors going on here. Um, yeah, do, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think it just goes to show um, just how quick valuations can change. Because, uh, you know, I talk about this all the time. People who try to analyze the Bitcoin price, they use all these, like, you know, fancy indicators and statistical analysis and things like that. Um, but, you know, if you want to figure out why the price is dropping, it's really simple. It's because people value their coins less for whatever reason. Um, and, you know, no amount of no amount of empirical, you know, or, I mean, quantitative analysis can uncover the reasoning behind people changing their valuations. So we can all we can really say is that people don't really want bitcoins anymore. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of people who want to spend it instead of holding it. Yeah, and that you know that could good and bad because bitcoin is becoming more of a legitimate currency because people are actually using it instead of just hoarding it. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it's hurting the value, um, which can you know diminish its viability uh, in terms of. You know, expanding. Um, people aren't really gonna if its purchasing power is low. People aren't really gonna want it. Um. But yeah, like it's gonna take a lot for the value to stabilize, for the price to stabilize. Um, and the main thing is going to be you know getting suppliers and people higher up the production chain to accept it. Um, and you know you said, you said you didn't think it was likely because um. A, a lot of merchants aren't really concerned with getting paying their suppliers in Bitcoin. They just want that like extra profit they make from the lower transaction fees, uh, you know. But I would argue that 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 reason is exactly why a lot of the suppliers would start um, accepting Bitcoin too, because they they can see how much money they can save by letting their letting the merchants buy things from them in Bitcoin mm -hmm. instead of, you know, bank transfers or, you know, however they do it with, obviously we'll have lots, then we'll just, it'll start moving up and, um, th you know, they'll, they'll start out doing it because not for any ideological reasons or anything, it's just cheaper. Um, but then, you know, as that progresses, it'll be cheaper to just use Bitcoin as the main currency, you know, cause everybody will be accepting it. Yeah. Because it is, at, at its core, it is a pretty efficient technology for transferring value. That's the main thing about the blockchain. It's just super simple to just, you know, pay a five cent transaction fee and just switch the, you know, switch, okay, this person owns this amount of Bitcoins, boom, now this person owns that amount. So it's it's super easy way of transferring value and super efficient. And that's where the, the, the basic appeal comes from. Um, you know, plus anonymity or pseudonym pseudonymity and stuff like that. But yeah, it's the it's the payment system at at the end of the day that makes it worth something. But yeah, it's people value their coins less. There's people who are spending a lot of coins um, on you know <laughs> all the all the multitude of stuff that you can buy with Bitcoin now, and there aren't that many people buying bitcoin you know like there's there's been this huge push this year to like spread adoption and get more people to buy and there's been some uh marginal developments in the buying space um circle has has recently launched for the people who request an invite including me and i've been using circle for the past week you know just testing out with testing out with small amounts buying uh from excuse me buying from, you know, buying with my debit card, you know, uh, and uh, it's super simple and, and instant. And, but like, still, even Circle is not available to everyone yet. It's not totally public. And the fact that we are barely getting um, this type of easy buying now in, in late 2014, uh, where, where it's just instant buy from your debit or credit card, um, like it's, it's kind of late to the party in terms of 
like how easy it is to spend Bitcoin compared to how easy it is to buy it back and for new people to, to buy into it. So it's like a merchant adoption has really, really, really outpaced the speed of uh, consumer adoption. So that's huge downward pressure on the price. 